Welcome to this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside, the podcast giving you advice, tips and tools for getting the most out of your research. I'm Adam Pawson and today I'll be talking to you about overhang PCR. Have you ever accidentally forgotten to add the COSAC consensus sequence to the start of a coding gene? Or did you forget to include the stop code on? Did you clone something and then realize you wanted to tag it with something? Or do you want to add restriction enzyme sites to your PCR product to make it easier to clone into a plasmid? Well then, overhang PCR may be your answer, and I'll be discussing what it is, its benefits, and how to do overhang PCR in the lab. So what is overhang PCR? Overhang PCR, also called primer extension PCR, is a technique that utilizes the intrinsic fidelity of the three prime end of primers for a specific sequence to enable you to add an extra sequence to the five prime end. This allows you to use PCR to amplify a sequence whilst adding nucleotides to either the five prime or three prime end of the sequence, which can then be cloned into a vector backbone for further use. How does it work? Primers can be designed that have an additional overhang sequence at the three prime ends that will then be incorporated into the PCR product. The first cycle of the PCR program causes the primers to anneal to the template at the complementary sites on the primers and create a product that contains the desired overhang regions. Subsequent cycles then amplify the strand of DNA to give a pool of PCR product that contains the new DNA sequence. How to add missing DNA sequences using primers. Number one, primer design. Ideally, at least half of your primer should encompass your existing sequence to ensure that the three prime end of the primer can bind to your target sequence. The rest of your primer can be your overhang. You want to aim for primers about 25 base pairs in length, but it depends on how big your desired overhang is. Note, if you are using restriction enzymes to digest your PCR product, you will need to add the corresponding cut site in order for it to work efficiently. Regarding thermodynamic properties, you only need to calculate and ensure you have satisfactory melting temperatures for the portion of the primer that anneals to your template. The manufacturer's instructions for your polymerase should tell you what the optimal melting temperature for the primers should be. Do not include overhang in your melting point calculations, as the first and second cycles are the most important and subsequent cycles will amplify the entire transcript. Number two, setup and PCR conditions. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for your favorite proofreading enzyme to set up your reaction. Adding DMSO can greatly improve the ability of a PCR reaction to succeed, especially when using potential supercoil templates such as plasmids or genomic DNA. For the PCR conditions, program the thermocycler as suggested, calculating the annealing temperature from the portion of the primer that anneals to the template, not the entire primer. Visualize the reaction on an appropriate percentage agarose gel. If successful, continue to step three, which is coming up. As with most procedures in the lab, the PCR reaction may not be successful with your initial settings and you may need to optimize the reaction conditions. You could try running multiple PCR reactions with annealing temperatures both above and below your initial temperature. If you still cannot obtain a PCR product, changing polymerases may help as each polymerase has different buffer compositions and kinetics, meaning another polymerase may be more amenable to your reaction. Number three, the PCR product. Once you have successfully amplified your PCR product, excise the correct band from the agarose gel and gel purify it using your lab's methodology or columns. This PCR product can now be ligated into a vector, whether it be digested with restriction enzymes that have been engineered into the overhang or poly A tailed and then TA cloned. Once you have successfully cloned your PCR product into your plasmid of choice, it is strongly recommended that you sequence your plasmid to ensure the overhangs are correct and present. Overhang PCR is a great way to add extra DNA sequences into clones that you may have forgotten at an earlier step. It's definitely a useful method to have in your arsenal. Like all PCR products, take care when designing your primers and calculating their melting temperatures and be careful with your primer concentrations, annealing temperatures, and extension times. Happy cloning! So that's it for Overhang PCR. Check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.